Thanks for being with us. Let's have a look at the ratings for week 37 for free to air TV. First day you see uh, the top five shows and Sunday night for seven at number one. Sunday night current affairs shows have just taken off Sunday night in particular. It has a break every year for Dancing with the Stars. I've got a feeling seven will just keep it on air all right through the year next year. It's just doing huge numbers. And 60 minutes as well in the top ten if we um, turn the page uh, for nine there uh, as well. Um, and X Factor, of course, uh, doing big numbers for seven. Yep. One yep, of their ratings yep, winners. Having a great year. Um, just looking at the subscription TV industry as well, the top five sports programs yeah, there. Another new record, that uh, Collingwood West Coast game, I think the um, most watched AFL game uh, ever on uh, subscription TV and the second highest subscription TV show this year. Wow, and uh, the non-sport top five there, Simpsons, Fox 8, and location, location, location for lifestyle sure, yep. at number two. Um, now, let's just uh, have a chat about uh, one of the big bits of news this week, and that was the arrival of Kim Kardashian uh, to help launch E's brand Evolution, it was called. Now, you were there. You, you've had your photo taken with uh, her. <laughs> what, what, did, what did you think of this and, and of the uh, good, evolution that's coming? Yeah, it was good. It was interesting, sort of juxtaposed posing Kim Kardashian. I think this is her third visit here. The first time didn't create much of a stir. Second time it was massive, you know, there was live coverage of her arriving. It was just about, it coincided with the breakup of a very short marriage. Um, this time a bit more mannered, you know, a bit more businesswoman uh, Kim. A bunch of media interviews on the, her only day in Sydney. Short function last night that she was interviewed by the uh, head of uh, E for um, the Asia Pacific region. Christine Fellows talked about the new look, and then Kim's off to uh, a day in Melbourne, I think, sort of sponsorship. E only had her for the one day, but she said, "Yeah, you know, she's uh, e, e made her famous, if you like." Uh, Ryan Seacrest identified her as a talent and put the produced the, the family. It's spun off to a lot of programs. I think we're currently getting the close to the end of the seventh series out here in Australia. It just finished recently in the US, and it's you know the, or the most watched shows ever on E. I think you know one, two, three, maybe number four are all sort of Kardashian properties, if you like. And there's some other big shows as well coming as part of this new new looky, yeah, if absolutely. you like. Coming Look, they're not going to veer away from what's you know made them famous. You know the E News or the Red Carpets hosted by Ryan Seacrest, and the Emmys, of course, be on uh, Monday morning our time, so that'll be big for them. But uh, opening act is coming up uh, from producer Nigel Lithgow. He's sort of well known for his work on American Idol, so you think you can dance. A little bit of a diversion for them, a massive investment, uh, where they virtually search for um, new talent that will open for a major headlining act. One of them is uh, Lady Gaga, and I think that episode was filmed in Brisbane when Lady Gaga was touring here earlier this year. I guess just uh, turning to some other news, and Nine has re-signed BBC, uh, a deal there for, for Top Gear. Yeah, but a little different this time. There's no commitment to any uh, Australian series, something that the BBC in insisted on in past deals both with SBS and Nine but I think they've realised look the audience just don't want to see you know a, a version of it here they want the real thing. Uh, BBC Knowledge will get the premiere of all the first run of all those episodes so it's a good win for pay TV. Nine will get the rights after that and it's a win for Nine too you guess probably the deal probably cost them a little bit less but I think a lot of their viewers won't mind look they'll be happy to see those uh, programs on there and let's face it they hadn't been rating too well for Nine so. I want to ask you too because you were mentioning earlier about the big numbers for Fox Footy uh, for that AFL match and um, uh, Fox Footy and also the age big winners at the AFL Media Awards Yeah this they week. have these awards every year and sort of uh, acknowledge the uh, journos and the reporters who do a best job covering the AFL and yeah Fox Footy did very well. David King uh, I think a bit of a newcomer to TV, he did fan ex-player, just done fantastic stuff looking at the uh, strategy behind games and, and what the coaches get up to, so yeah, a good win there. And Eddie Maguire, given lifetime membership of, uh, of the uh, AFL uh, Media Association. Now, we were talking earlier about 10 and uh, these new US shows coming. What, what are some of them um, and are they being fast-tracked? Yeah, they are, absolutely. Uh, the things 10 wants to get to airs like Homeland did very well for them uh, earlier this year. New season's back, so they're going to get that uh, straight to air. Some new episodes of NCIS, they, gee, they're really sweating on those. I think the first one might be coming out on Sunday night, and I'm not sure if it stays there or goes to its regular slot on Tuesday nights, but they need to get that back in. Um, the New Normal's a new one. It's from uh, producer um, Ryan Murphy, the guy behind uh, Glee. 
So uh, I think it's been doing quite well in the States too. It was number three show, I think, Tuesday night this week in the US, so that might do all right for them. Ben and Kate, I think, is a new sitcom. Don't know much about it. Vegas, the sort of a drama series set in Las Vegas and uh, dealing with, I think, the mob. Um, and obviously, Ten not the only uh, of these uh, networks broadcasters bringing US shows more quickly to Australia because this has yeah. been a real issue, hasn't it? I mean, a complaint of viewers that you know they, they don't get well, it. I don't think it's a, it's a major drama for a lot of viewers. I think you know they can wait. You know, there's talk about people will go online. Yeah, that happens, but it's still I think a, it's a, still a relatively small percentage of the audience does go online and search them out and go, oh, look, I've got to have this, it's come out. But, you know, networks need to address this for the long term. If they, you know, kept sitting on stuff for too long, more and more people, as it gets easier on the internet, smart TVs and all that, will go around and look for them. So they are addressing it, but I don't think it's a huge thing. And they have been fast-tracking for a while, too. And it's not it's something that's just happened. Right, so it's, what would you say? It's a little bit of a PR exercise, well, if you so, like, yeah. into the it's end a, of the it's year? It's a nice angle to, yeah. to, to promote the show, saying, yeah, look, you know, this is straight off the satellite. Yeah. It's been on two hours ago in the US. Of course, nothing can ever be screened before it gets its premiere on the US yeah. or in the UK if it's uh, something like Downton Abbey. So, you know... Um, I guess just moving on to a, a different um, story, and the Nine Today Show is celebrating its 30-year anniversary. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a uh, long time, isn't it? And uh, it comes at a time when Ten's still struggling to get their, you know, their show coming up for its first anniversary at the end of the year, I guess. Still yet to make a mark. But, you know, Today Show started, you know, people thought that would get cancelled. Steve um, Liebman's talked about that in the early days. He wouldn't have been surprised if nine pulled the plug so you know there's a message there for 10 maybe look just stick with it and uh perhaps the audience will come one of his big stars though carl stefanovic hasn't yet re-signed his no, contract no still hasn't committed still hasn't said look i will stay with nine he keeps sort of dancing around that subject when he's interviewed and as his manager would be instructing him to i guess if yeah. you go into contract negotiations you know you want to have something to negotiate on um just back to that story about fast tracking um in interesting that we did see a, a conviction of a sydney man for selling illegal subscription tv this week so a, a win for for foxtel yeah absolutely it's such a hot product uh, variety the um, subscription TV that there is a black market for it but uh, they they ha had a bit of success in the past tracking them down and they they still go after those people that try and you know get around it and uh, put it on the illegal I guess also a huge story has been uh, the uh, publication of uh, topless photos of uh, the uh, princess Kate um, so I mean looking at this the the French magazine's been banned from distributing the photos, but I mean, and Australian magazines have come out and said, "Look, we're not going to." Um, what, what do you make of this? Is it, I mean, there are other it's magazines weird, around the world it's that uh, are going to. It's amazing how this came such a major story. I think there's been a total of three magazines now, th three all European, one in France, a couple in Scandinavia, or oh, the Italian magazine too, uh, the Irish newspaper, which caused a big fuss by doing it. Um, you know, if there wasn't such a you know a market for it, it wouldn't be a big deal. I guess if it's wrong for the uh, for the Duchess, it's probably wrong for anybody. So you know, I don't think she should be singled out, but maybe she can you know set a uh, you know set a precedent where mm. it, it just won't be sort of a, a go-to place for uh, for magazines and all celebrities might you know benefit. But then is it much of a hardship for them? I don't know. It's it's a really hard one. Yeah, I think I just stepped on royal protocol there by calling out princesses of Duchess. Very sorry about that. Um, Women's Day also out with a new look. I guess when you, we were talking about magazines here, new look, more food, more puzzles, and a new psychic. Yeah, yeah, more puzzles. It's a uh, it's an area their readers love. Food's been very good for them. They've increased their food uh, recently, and a new psychic, Mitchell uh, Coombs, is coming. I think he used to write for That's Life, so he's moved from Pacific, if you like, across to ACP, and with he's also known from his work on The Morning Show on Seven. I've um, got to ask you too, there have been some more lawsuits for News International announced this past week. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of more people have uh, been arrested. Um, in the terms of illegal payments, I think, to police and authorities, there was a policeman, I think two journalists with The Sun. So, and then we're still, you know, there's a massive court cases are ready to come out there. And then a, uh, a lawsuits from some, uh, Neil Kinnock, former uh, leader of the Labor Party in the UK, Russell Brand, Katie Price, and a former husband, Peter Andre. So it's just going to be, this is going to be tied up in the courts for a long time, I think. Interesting, um, something we spoke about uh, some weeks ago, Fairfax had a problem with the ABC show Media Watch, and now the Daily Telegraph too thinks that there's a vendetta against it. 
Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? But I'm not sure how much we should spend on this because it's, uh, it's media talking about a media show yes. and then the media responding <laughs> to comments about... Yeah, Getting but there's, you know, it's... Uh, the Daily Telegraph has turned up a lot on, on Media Watch and it's something I guess no journalist likes to be, to be featured on. Uh, just finally as well, Commercial Radio calling for tenders for its new audi audience measurement contract. Sure, yeah, but it's a five-year deal. They sell it as a sort of a three plus two so they can modify the contract part of the way through. Nielsen's had it for, for quite a while now. There was a lot of fuss a decade ago when people like Arbitron were in here trying to sell their electronic measurement uh, port portable people meter devices. That sort of never, they came close to going with that, but they didn't. But now they're looking for maybe sticking with the diaries and then part of an electronic thing, maybe a mix of the two, if it could work for them. Keep an eye on that. James, well, thank you so much great. as always. James Manning from Media Week. That's all we have time for from the team here. Thanks for your company.